time. Your final lesson. The idea for the survivors um, wasn't completely my own. I can actually blame my son Bryce for for at least part of that. Uh, and Bryce ended up actually uh, being in the film ultimately as John. Um, we were out one night uh, doing some test shots with one of my cameras. And uh, during that process, Bryce had actually got this idea and he presented it to me. He said, what if, what if there was a boy who could see the future and he saw some bad things coming and he ran away from home, ran away from, from town and was living out somewhere in the boondocks by himself to hide uh, from these people that were going to come. And uh, it was kind of a cool idea and we actually explored that idea for a while even developed kind of a story out of that and was kind of working on that but then realized that it was getting very complicated very quickly and I asked Bryce because he had never done anything like this before he never expressed any interest in acting or being in any of my films or anything of that nature I had suggested that we do a simple test film uh, that would you know kind of see if he still felt at the end of that process if he still felt like exploring doing a film and he said yeah and so we did that and we did a little test film called one apart and uh, not much of a story but it was just kind of a test to uh, to see test how he would do um, and I could test the feel that I was looking for and uh, we liked it he enjoyed it I enjoyed it and then from there we actually or I went back to the, the drawing board and kind of just built on that story that we sort of did in the in one apart and just kind of added the layers to it until we ended up with the survivors when i first heard about the premise it definitely intrigued me i liked the idea of the story it seemed like it had a lot of potential to go places and i liked the world that it was going to be set in as well it had a lot of possibilities aesthetically that i was intrigued in it just piqued my interest, so I was like, this sounds like something cool I'd want to be a part of. My first thought when I heard the premise was that it would be insanely fun to do, and I love that kind of movie, and I'd never thought about doing anything like that. Uh, Randy approached me with the idea, kind of gave me an idea, thought about what was going on with it and where it was headed, and I thought it sounded like something that was going to be really awesome. I really didn't know what to expect from the experience because I'd really only been worked on one film set before, so I kind of planned for just about anything to happen. And it well, well beyond my expectations. I just thought it was a fantastic experience um, being on set, working with the people that were there, and it was definitely better than I thought it, it could have been. Probably one of the more taxing or challenging aspects of uh, at least for me, uh, putting this together was I kind of had to do everything as far as coordinating all the people, uh, scheduling, um, and bringing all that together uh, in a very short period of time and trying to accomplish quite a bit in a very short uh, period of time, a, a very small shoot um, over a couple of weekends. And the bulk of it was really over one weekend. Um, but bringing them people from across the state was, you know, getting those schedules, that was difficult for me. Um, and the other thing was probably working on the truck. Um, that truck was actually uh, lent to us by uh, Travis, who actually ended up being in the film, uh, who is a me mechanic by trade. And uh, he had this truck. It was his from, I believe, from, from high school, if I remember correctly. Uh, and it was in the middle of a field, hadn't been used in years. It was white and full of junk and just really messed up. And, uh, and Travis had to kind of resurrect that truck uh, by putting some new parts in it, a flywheel, starter, and a few other things. We had to jack it up. Um, and then I ended up actually spending the week going into filming, uh, painting that truck. Stripping it down and painting it was done literally last minute. We literally, the paint was still curing on that truck when we rolled the cameras on it. 
Uh, it hadn't quite set up yet. In fact, the day of the shoot, we did some touch-ups to the body and to the tanks of the truck. And that was challenging to make, you know, to make sure that was getting done um, in time for the shoot. One of the things that happened during the shoot that got a little bit uh, unnerving was uh, that black beast kept breaking down. It kept overheating and then it wouldn't want to start. So then Travis would get out and, and, and tinker with it and get it to start and then it would run for a while. We'd do a few shots and then it would overheat and then it wouldn't start and repeat that cycle many times. So that was real fun <laughs> to say the least um, yeah I think one of my biggest surprises on this film was um, working with someone like Amber and Tianta and Jackson these people that brought their talents that I'm not used to working with um, Amber was phenomenal uh, it was such a nice uh, gift to actually get to work with someone who really knows what they're doing as far as uh, acting and, and bringing a performance and breathing life into a character um, and, and let's face it there's not a lot of dialogue in this movie so all the acting is done through action through you know mannerisms and, and facial expressions and and body language um, and that's a particular kind of acting that's not easy to do and uh, she hit those notes perfectly uh, very impressive uh, same with Tiana, you know, a very small part, not much to do there, uh, but she really owned it and brought a lot of life and, and, and uh, sympathy to that character. So that was a real, a real treat for me. Uh, and then you've got Jax. <laughs> yeah, he's a character. Jax is a very tough guy and... I don't think he was used to people being gruff with him. And I was gruff with him a few times <laughs> because I was like, this is what I need from you. I need you to hush your mouth right now because you just need to settle down. And I don't think he was used to being manhandled, especially by somebody like me. <laughs> but he rolled with it fairly well. And I think it just contributed to a better production in the end. So, so Jax definitely looks like a, a big scary dude until he talks. And then he's just a big fluffy teddy bear that pretty much all he wants to do is eat everything that gets anywhere near him like uh, granola bars candy bars anything that's edible within range is it's doomed Jax is gonna down it anything I think if a little fluffy bunny would have walked by at the wrong time Jax probably would have ate that too no really uh, Jax is, is um a really cool guy he he brings with him a real a real personality and a real presence uh, on screen that uh, is definitely unique and very special and um, I found myself uh, really enjoying watching him on the screen and, and, and become uh, become this character because uh, quite honestly I didn't expect a whole lot out of that character originally and um, and he just brought a certain life to it that really resonated on screen. And the interesting thing about Jax's character, the Black Rider, is that originally um, I had written the flashback scene where he's talking to his son, trying to explain to him how he should live. I actually conceived that scene originally without you ever seeing Jax's face at all. The idea being uh, to hide his face so that there would be an actual reveal in the campfire scene when you see that it's, you know, that the Black Rider is John's dad. And I wanted that twist originally, but once I saw Jax on set and I seen the, the dynamic between him and, and, and Bryce playing out, I realized it was too good not to film. So I just roll with it. That's a, that's a case where you kind of have to be flexible in, in filmmaking where you make a decision that's not on paper and ends up being better. 
And so Jax really brought that. And if it wasn't for him, I don't know that I would have filmed it that way. I think my, my favorite memory probably from, from production, from the whole crazy time that happened with everything was uh, when we wrapped the last scene and me and Jax took a picture together with the final slate. I think that was probably, I think really the last, the final slate was probably my favorite memory. My favorite aspect would definitely have to be the people that I met. I came into it really only knowing two of the actors involved. I hadn't met anybody else before. I never even worked in the Billings area. And just getting to know the people was my favorite part of the whole thing because I just, we worked together so well. You wouldn't know that we had been strangers a few weeks before. We just came together and I think we knocked out an awesome production that I think we said quiet on set like once, which is, I thought was pretty phenomenal to come on to a set like that. And we had it one time be like, guys, shut up, we need to get this done. And I came away with a lot of friends. It led to some new projects that I was really excited to be part of. And yeah, the people, definitely my favorite aspect. Even though uh, most of us were strangers, a few of us had worked together uh, before, uh, but you know, for the most part, it was a it was a it was a set of strangers, and uh, unknown what we were going to create for sure. Um, and everybody came together in such a fantastic way um, that I will forever be proud of that and be in awe of that because it was just a very cool unique special circumstance um, that has a very special place in, 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 in my memories for years to come.